In this video, we will look at Euler's formula and use it to express the sine and the cosine functions in terms of complex exponentials. So what that means is that on the left-hand side of the equation, we'll have real functions, and on the right-hand side, we'll have uh, complex functions. So it's not immediately obvious how that can happen, and so in this video, we'll look into uh, the complex plane to see what exactly happens so that we get um, a real expression like sine and cosine on the left-hand side in terms of complex numbers on the right-hand side of the expression. So let's take a, a closer look. So this is Euler's formula. Um, this is a complex number on the left-hand side, a complex exponential e to the i x, and we'll see it on an Argand diagram in a moment. And it's just given by uh, the real part, cos x plus i, i being the square root of minus 1. Often people also use j to denote the square root of minus 1. Um, i times sine x, where sine x is referred to as the imaginary part. So to give you the expression straight away, we are saying that cos x is equal to e to the i x plus e to the minus i x divided by 2. So let's see why that works. First of all then, we can rewrite this left-hand expression um, for the case of when the argument of the complex exponential is negative. So here we have e to the minus i x equal to cos x. And notice that we haven't put cos minus x, we've just put cos x there. Why is that? Well, it's due to the fact that um, cos x is an even function. Um, which means that cos minus x is equal to cos of plus x. So that's the expression for an even function, f of minus x is equal to f of x. Let's verify that that works. This is a plot of the cosine function. The origin is here. As we progress forwards along the x-axis, we get a, a value f of the function for that position x. And then notice that if we progress negatively by the same amount, and if we look at the function value, it is equal to the same function value. Uh, another example, had we progressed to the right, uh, that distance x, we'd have this negative value for the function. And if we'd done um, the same distance, but in the negative direction, so if we'd done minus x, we'd have got exactly the same function value again, uh, in this instance, a negative value. So that's an example of an even function. And it means that we can just write cos x instead of cos minus x, because it's an even function. Um, and now notice that the sine function, um, we've, we've, you know, naively, we could have just written plus i sine minus x over here, but we've written it as minus i sine x. Well, why is that? Well, it's because the sine is an odd function, which means that um, as we progress along the x-axis, so a distance x here, and we look at the function value, if we progress that same distance in the negative direction, then we get the negative of that function value, okay? So that means f of x here, which is referring to that value there, is equal to uh, the same value but negated if we go in the opposite direction on that x-axis. And so because of that, um, that means that this sine of minus x that would have appeared here, we've just rewritten as minus sine x. Okay, and so therefore, if we add this expression to this expression, then we can see the two cosine terms uh, combine. We'd have had a t 2 cos x there. And then the sine expressions here, the imaginary parts, completely cancel each other out. And so we're left with 2 cos x. And so we need to divide it by 2 to get the expression for cosine x. So hopefully that's quite straightforward. Um, and now let's do a similar process for the sine function. So again, we're going to make use of that complex exponential with the negative argument. And again, just following all the same reasoning as before, we've got cos uh, minus x is the same as cos x. And then sine of minus x is the same as minus sine of plus x. Okay, so that's just relying on the fact that sine was an odd function. Um, so if we do a, a sort of a similar pattern of uh, methodology as the previous slide, this time we take the, the, this uh, complex exponential here, and now we subtract off the complex exponential with the negative argument. And so what that will do will mean that the two cosines here and here will cancel each other. 
But now, of course, this sign minus minus sign will give us um, two lots of that sign. And of course, it's still got um, the, the i factor, the square root of minus one left in there as well. Um, and so we end up with two i sine x. And so we need to divide out that two i. And then of course, clearly that expression would be equal to sine x. Um, we don't always use it um, in this form. And so, because it's not very nice to have the i, the square root of minus one in the denominator. And so often what is done is the numerator and the denominator are both multiplied by i. Um, and so that means uh, we get an i squared here, which is minus two, and we put the minus there. And the numerator still has an i left behind, so that appears here. And we're just putting that as a, as a multiplier for the whole of that expression. So we have the real function here, uh, sine x, expressed as a difference of two complex exponentials and with this particular coefficient minus i divided by 2. So let's take a look at the complex plane or the argan diagram to see what's happening for both the cosine and the sine when we use these uh, expressions. So here's the complex plane or an argand diagram. We have the real axis going horizontally from minus infinity to plus infinity. And then we have the imaginary axis from minus infinity to plus infinity in the vertical direction. So if we just take e to the i x, that's going to be um, plotted um, often as a line. This is like a, a phasor in some terminology, but here you can just consider it as a point in the complex plane. So the real part is um, here, cos x. So that means we go a distance cos x on the real axis. And then we go up a distance sin x for the imaginary part. And that takes us to where that arrow is pointing. So that is plotting a point on the complex plane. Um, although, as I say, often we draw a line from the origin to that point, a little bit like um, as if it were a vector. But really, we're just plotting a point for the for the complex number e to the i x. Okay, so far so good. And also that's, this is what is so remarkable about Euler's formula is that um, as you can see with the sine and cosine, that's basically saying that the angle of that line which connects the origin to that, that point, um, the angle is x, okay? So e to the i x equals cos x plus i sine x. Quite a remarkable uh, equality. Right, so let's uh, press on then to try and understand those cosine and sine expressions. So remember we were making use of the negative argument uh, version of that complex exponential, in other words, e to the minus i x. So what does that look like? Well, I've just drawn a line from the origin to here to denote e to the minus i x because that would have the same real component cos x, but it's got the negative of that imaginary part and so that's why it goes negatively on that y-axis, on that imaginary axis. Um, so if we now add together those two complex exponentials, which is what we were doing when we were finding that expression for the cosine. So the first complex number takes us from the origin up to here, that's e to the i-x. And then we add on e to the minus i-x. So that takes us from that point in the complex plane back down to the real axis, which is why we end up here purely with a real value, which is just uh, in this particular instance, that's equal to two cos x. It's just the summation of those two complex numbers. So it's like we take a kind of journey out in, into the complex plane and then come all the way back to the real axis again. Um, and so therefore from that, we can obviously just rewrite it as we did before and just divide by two to get cos x. Okay, so a similar process, although a little bit more involved for the case of uh, sine. Uh, here again is the, the complex number e to the ix, drawing from the origin to that point there, e to the ix, angle x with the x-axis, with the real axis. And this time we're going to be subtracting off e to the minus ix, removing uh, the, the complex exponential with the negative argument. So first of all, let's... Uh, replot the e to the minus i x. So we know that's going from the origin um, and then along a distance cos x, then minus sine x downwards on the imaginary axis. So we're gonna do, now we do e to the i x minus that. So we go from here to e to the i, e to the i x, then we subtract 
e to the minus ix. So that lands us purely on the imaginary axis. So obviously we've got a distance sine x here and another distance of sine x. So the net result of that, and here I've used i to denote the fact that this is on the imaginary axis, so it's a distance to sine x, okay, to sine x along the imaginary axis, hence we've got i for the, to indicate the square root of minus 1. And we're saying that we get that if we take e to the ix minus e to the minus ix. Okay, um, now uh, moving on to show clearly that complex number here, which has just got an imaginary component, 2i sine x was equal to the difference, you know, e to the ix minus e to the minus ix. So that's this point here, the sum of those two complex numbers, two complex exponentials. Um, now to rework this to get our pure expression for sine x, which is what we want, let's take a look again on the Argand diagram what is happening here. So first of all then, to rearrange that expression, uh, we might want to multiply by i, in other words, to try and get uh, a real expression on the left-hand side here. If we multiply by i, then i times i, that's i squared, is minus 1. So this goes to minus, and then we've just left with 2 sine x on the left-hand side. And again, we multiplied both sides by i, so that means we have a coefficient of i for the difference in those two complex exponentials. So what does that look like on the complex plane? Well, it's purely a real value of minus 2 sine x. So when we multiply by i, notice that effectively we're doing a, a 90, deg 90 degrees uh, positive rotation. But that's just an aside. You don't need to necessarily know that. Um, but uh, here I've just plotted the consequence of multiplying both sides by i, and we go from the 2 sine x on the imaginary axis to minus 2 sine x on the, the real axis. Um, although we want the expression for positive sine x, so let's do a little bit more manipulation. Now we're going to multiply by minus 1, and that gives us 2 sine x is equal to minus i, and then e to the ix minus e to the minus ix. So that obviously just flips that um, on the real axis. So 2 sine x is just the negative of minus 2 sine x, and it's just given by that expression that we've worked through from the top of the slide there. Um, and then rearranging that, um, you can get the familiar expression. You could either do the difference divided by 2i, or you could write it the way I have here with minus i divided by 2, whatever is more convenient for your purposes. But the point to note is that we've ended up again with a purely real value, 2 sine x um, in this context of the red arrow, or over here, half of that, just sine x, being expressed as a difference of two complex numbers. And in this case, you can see that it's been a little bit more involved to show that. Um, but the point being, we end up with a real, real expression on the left-hand side. Okay, so um, Euler's formula um, allows us um, to express sines and cosines um, in terms of complex exponentials. And that will prove extremely useful for, for understanding the complex Fourier series and in turn also for understanding the Fourier transform and the inverse Fourier transform, especially when it comes to dealing with Fourier transforms of real functions. Um, it's really important to understand the, the concepts I've just gone through on these slides so that you can understand why, um, for example, an inverse Fourier transform, which has got complex exponentials in it, why that can be used to represent a purely real function, which of course it can be used, used to do. Um, but um, this, this um, video really has shown you how on the left-hand side we can have a purely real expression, and then on the right-hand side we can have complex exponentials. So I hope that's um, given a bit more insight into this. Thank you.